I'm Elizabeth with Spotted Circus from Southern Indiana. And as you can see, we obviously have a farm. So, sad that we can't all get together this year, but unfortunately, it's kind of actually worked out for me because we have a bottle baby. So, every two hours this year, for the next six months at least, I'm going to be up here bottle feeding. Um, so, in a way, I guess it's worked out okay. So, as you can see, we have our lovely stinky dog in the background, who's her best friend, and we have guineas. So, if anybody wants to buy this fleece for like a thousand dollars a pound for my labor for the next year, you know, that would be awesome. So, we raise alpacas, we also have teeswater sheep and llamas, um, we have a couple of guard dogs, we have guineas and chickens as you can hear as well. So, we're just a small family farm. We only have, I think, 14 alpacas um, and five sheep right now. So, my little helper here is very handy, as you can see. She likes to chew on your clothes. Um, she thinks she's a dog right now, which isn't the most fun in the world. And she likes to bite your neck, because she's also part vampire. Um, so we raise alpacas and sheep for their fleece, specifically. Um, normally, they're a little bit bigger than this. At two months old, she's almost 20 pounds, but she was born at seven and a half when she should have been born closer to 15. So she's tiny, but she's cute. When she's not biting you at least. So in the background there is the baby Priya's dad. And then this little guy, which is actually a little ewe lamb, was born on the exact same day. The big difference is this one weighs close to 60 pounds. So this is a little baby tease water. She's not quite as friendly is what the baby lamb, or is what the baby Korea is. But you can see her tiny little locks that are starting to form. And there's her poor mom sitting in the shade because it's hot out and sheep don't like the heat. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the fibers that we sell. And I'll put a timestamp down here for the yarn section. So if you're not a spinner or felter, then you can skip ahead to yarn, although I wouldn't because there's some pretty fun and interesting fibers. So the first thing that we sell here is, of course, fleeces. You know, we raise alpacas, so we have alpaca fleece. Um, I also work at several other farms that are large that have uh, prize-winning alpacas. They're pretty high quality, and we do blow them out and vacuum them prior to shearing. So all the fleeces are really relatively clean. And I'll put up a bunch of different photos here so that way you can kind of get an idea as to what we've got. If there's something specific that you're looking for, just let me know. I may have it, and it may just not have gotten listed in time. So, besides selling fleeces, you obviously then need a drum carter. So that way you can cart it and get it prepped for spinning. So, I'm a Strauss drum carter dealer. I love Strausses. They have a lifetime warranty on them that can't be beat. The liquor in that they have, which is what first up takes the fiber, has actual blades versus a comb on it. And it really helps to open up the locks. Um, I can't say enough good stuff about the Strauss Drum Carter brand. Um, they do ship for free, and I also include $50 in free blending fibers, so that way you can get started and have a lot of fun right off the bat. So, speaking of blending fibers, how about some of these? These are all sampler packs, so that way if you've ever wanted to try different types of fibers, you can. We have rose fiber, tinsel fiber, tussa silk, mulberry silk, mint, milk, and bamboo. And I think I also have undyed Firestar as well. So these are all just little one ounce amounts which kind of just give you a sample of the different types of fibers to see if it's something that you might like. Um, I also have sari silk, but I just realized I forgot to bring it along with me. But we do have sari silk roving also in the shop. So you can't talk about blending fibers without the fun that is Angelina. I have close to 40 different colors of Angelina in the shop right now. Everything from these interesting white ones that reflect with colors. We have blended fibers where it's multiple colors together. Um, let's see, neon ones, because you know, why not have bright colored neons? And a little bit of everything that you've ever imagined in Angelina and stuff that you maybe never even have. Like for example, have you ever seen a decal cut Angelina? It's basically Angelina with crimp. You know? Interesting stuff. If you don't spin, you could have a really awesome Christmas tree with all of those different types of sparkle. And I'm also going to include that if you buy 10 Angelinas, I'm going to throw in two for free. So, if you really are into art yarn spinning or felting, we have Teeswater Locks. We currently have five Teeswater sheep, 
Um, we just had our first baby this year, a little lamb. And these are some of the fleeces off of actually the mother sheep, um, whose name is Other Sheep. Um, her flocks are right around six inches still this year, six to nine inches. Um, these have all been dyed and hand washed. There is some mild debris in it, like this. Um, we got her somewhat late in the year last year, and when she when we got her, we bred her, and we were worried about coating her because she'd never had a coat on, um, and we didn't want to stress her out. So we have different colored tees water locks. Um, we have tees water locks from other sheep. We have tees water locks from Ted the sheep. Most of them are a minimum of six inches, unless otherwise noted, um, and they're all just gorgeous. I mean, they have beautiful shine to them, beautiful lock structure. These are very easy to pull apart if you want to pull out individual locks for tail spinning. Long locks. So these are some of the locks from other sheep, or not from other sheep, from peep sheep. So these I don't have as much of in stock right now. However, I do have close to 11 pounds of this fleece. So it's just kind of a matter of me being able to work through it. I do go through and individually separate out all the locks and then wash them individually prior to dyeing them. So you can see we've got almost 11 inches here of fleece. And this is neon pink and purple, which will glow under black light. So I only have these two batches available right now. However, if you want something specific color-wise, just let me know. It's pretty easy to do. It's just this is a much more labor-intensive dyeing with these types of locks because I do individually separate it and then you get this really pretty bundle of one ounce locks. I also have two really interesting fleeces that came from a friend's house. Um, these sheep were not coated, so there is some mild debris as you're gonna see in here. If you open up the locks and shake them out, it will very easily drop out. However, I didn't want to destroy just how pretty these little bitty curly locks are. So this is a Border Lester BFL Tees Water Cross. So you can see here the locks unstretched are almost six inches but they can stretch out to probably closer to seven or eight and it got some of the luster that Tees Water has in it but then it took on the BFL and Border Luster crimp and lock style. So they're really interesting fleeces. Um, they're squishy but yet drapey. So I have a few of these that I have dyed up and they'll just be kind of available in sections. Uh, I'm going to try to do four ounce amounts roughly. Um, they're really pretty, really squishy. We're planning on, this is actually a ewe lamb, so we're planning on probably adding her to our flock next year and actually crossing her with a cormo to fine it down even farther. Uh, right now, looking at the micron, I'd probably estimate it's between a 24 and 25 micron fleece. So it's still very soft feeling, and it's just really squishy like a sponge. Okay, so here we have stained glass merino, which most of you may be looking at it going, what on earth's that? It's normally this super bright colored roving, kind of like this picture up here. However, it's been on back order for me for since the beginning of COVID basically, and it just literally showed up yesterday. So I have some drying. This is what stained glass merino looks like undyed. It's a black and white merino with a little hint of sparkly fire star in it. And when it's dyed up and spun up, it can turn into this, which, you know, some people get turned off because of all the black that's in this fiber, but really it produces a beautiful dark tweedy color. With the nylon content and the Fire Star, these would actually be pretty decent for socks. I was hoping to do it in a superwash, but unfortunately the company that manufactures this for me does not do superwash in the blending that I would like. So, for the people that thought it was too dark, I now have a grayed out version of stained glass merino. So instead of using the black, I'm using some shades of gray, but it still has the little bit of Fire Star that's sparkly in here. But you can kind of see the sparkle there. Um, so I'm going to be dyeing up a bunch of this over the next coming weeks. And it should be up in the shop as available. And if not, I will put down that it's a pre-order and it will go out within two to three weeks, probably max after your order. Um, and it's just because I've literally just gotten this in. So 
stained glass merino and maybe I'll call this like I don't know misty merino shadow merino I don't know I think it's gonna be really interesting though to see it dyed up same colorway on both of these so stained glass merino it's in the shop it's ready to go if it's the orange pink and yellow colorway it'll spin up like this and it will glow under black light so this is our merino and firestar blend it is a 21 micron merino with rainbow firestar embedded in it which is a nylon and i have it in oil slick which is this black color and moonshine which is a white which i've normally had but I've also added a gold tone, some red, blue, and some purple. And Spun Up, this is a coil spun art yarn out of the um, oil slick colorway. And then I also did a ply where I took some of my neon rainbow stained glass merino and then I plied it back with a ply of the black oil slick. And it's extremely fire starry. But I think it's just gorgeous. And this, of course, will glow under black light like any of my neons. So maybe Firestar is a not quite in your face disco ball enough for you. We also have our Merino Sparkle Base. So we have Rumple Stillskin, which has gold Stellina in it. And this is a Merino Stellina blend. And then we have Emerald City, which is a blend of greens and green. Stellina because who doesn't love sparkle and if you completely hate sparkle we do have some non sparkle merino so this is clown wig maleficent and orchard and people kind of walk by clown wig because it is pretty bright but look at how gorgeous it spins up and then maleficent and this is newly restocked in the shop and then orchard we do have alpaca roving. Um, some of our alpaca roving is blended with Starbright nylon, and some of it also has some Cormo in it. And we have a few straight out alpaca. So we have a gray alpaca, and then we also have a fawn alpaca. Um, and all of this is sub 20 microns, so it's extremely fine and very, very nice to spin. Okay, so here we have yarns now. So we're going to go through the lace slash fingering weight alpaca yarns that we carry. We have a brushed alpaca, surrey alpaca, and mulberry silk blend. There's not a ton of this in the shop because unfortunately they are very, very back ordered on this and really don't know when they're going to be getting it back into stock. Um, we have our alpaca sock blend, which is an alpaca superwash merino with nylon. And then we have some of our home farm raised alpaca. These are two natural colors of gray alpaca. We have silver and rose alpaca and they're both blended with 20 percent mulberry silk and then this comes from one of our older girls windy skies and it's brown alpaca with a little bit of gold fire star and then a little bit of jade pearl rose fiber and it has a really pretty sparkle to it so this is the superwash so sock section so this is all superwash merino nylon um, this colorway pink pops a lot of fun i actually used it along with a purple surrey brushed to make a love note with. I have a few semi-solid colors and then I have some variegated colors obviously and then I also have some reverse speckles on this base. So this one right over here is called Oil Slick and it's basically black with blips, blackish charcoal gray with blips of color throughout and this one is Holiday Lights. So it's a green with just random flecks of color and I'll insert a photograph here of the White Owl Crochet Company honey tea that I completed in this space right here just to kind of give you an idea as to what it looks like. So I also carry a Superwash BFL with Firestar nylon base that's also a fingering weight. Um, great for socks because it's more durable than what a regular merino would be. So we have Neon Galaxy, we have, uh, what's this one called? Sea Witch, we have Steampunk, and then this is another reverse speckle colorway, and this is called Neon Disco Lights, and it has flicks of neon speckles throughout, and I'm currently working on a wifty top by the Fiber Muse out of this space, which I'll insert a picture of right here.
We do have a few kind of one-offish, but not a whole lot of colorways. And some other fingering weights, I have this Superwash Sock Mini Skein Set. There's approximately 689 yards in this mini skein set, and it comes with a speckle, a reverse speckle, and then speckled solids. There's also some uh, sparkle sock. It is a non-superwash merino with Stellina blended in. And then I have, I think, just three mini skein sets of this 50-50 Mulberry Silk Yak blend. We have a couple of self-striping sock bases still. Um, some of the self-striping is on an alpaca wool bamboo nylon blend, and then the others are on superwash merino nylon. Um, so yeah, like this is black unicorn mane. It'll actually stripe with 10 rows of black and then 10 rows of a rainbow that should circle up out around depending upon your gauge. Um, these three definitely glow under black light once again because we got the black light craziness going on here. Okay, getting into the heavier weight fibers. Um, I do carry a DK weight in non-superwash Polworth. Each of these skeins are 325 yards, and I have a pretty good variety here. Um, this is Neon Mermaid, and I did make a... What sweater was that? I made a sweater out of it. Can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but it turned out really pretty, I think. Um, I have a nice neon speckle here. I have kind of a reddish gold fall color. Um, a couple of solids here with the color of money and grape ape. This is called narwhal and it's a gray that has some micro stripes of a rainbow in it. And then a nice vineyard colorway which would actually go really kind of nice with this fall one right here. So this DK Polworth is really nice. Um, I'm very sensitive to itch factor normally and this is one of the few sheep wools that so far has made my neck happy. So definitely a lot of fun and a lot of squish to these yards or to these skeins. So this is my Merpak Yak Silk DK weight, which that's a mouthful I know, but it's merino wool with alpaca, yak, and mulberry silk. The skeins are pretty small. They're only 137 yards. I did use these four colors plus my orange colorway uh, pumpkin spice latte to make a shifty cowl, which I'll put a picture of that in here. And it's a really fun little yarn, um, super silky and luxurious feeling, and definitely extremely warm. And then I have just a few skeins left of the Silky Erin, which this is a mulberry silk tube with alpaca and merino blown into it. So you can see it's got like a chainette tube there that the fiber then gets blown into. It's extremely lightweight. This is 50 grams and 164 yards, and it is an Aran weight for sure. Um, I've done a hat out of this, and it's super luxurious. So there's a couple of colorways of this in the shop. Um, so definitely check it out. It's an interesting construction, and it definitely feels very, very luxurious. So then finally, if you're just not feeling your crafting mojo, I have different types of finished goods. I have alpaca felted soap, which is soap that gets alpaca felted out around it and actually acts as a washcloth and shrinks as you use it. I have a bunch of finished goods that I've personally hand knit on my machines and done the dyeing for. And then we also have dryer balls, just in case you want to get something interesting for some of the loved ones in your life. So for me and our little baby lamb here, we really appreciate you guys watching the video and checking out all of our fiber and stuff. If you have any questions about any fiber or you want to do any type of a custom order, just send me a message and let me know. And next year, hopefully, we'll get to see baby sheep's fleece here. What do you think, baby sheep? Oh, you're so cute. And the sheep is gone, because that's how sheep are. They do their own thing. They're not really interested in hanging out with you. So, hope everybody has a great summer. See you later. Bye.